Jesus, 
Good morning. Welcome to the Northeast Side Church of Christ here in Bartlett, Tennessee, where we just want to help you to experience Jesus. And we thank you for tuning in with us this morning. Uh, and no matter whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, or our website, we're just glad to have you in the house of the Lord online this morning. And for all those that are members of the church, we want to thank you. Thank you for uh, helping us get through this pandemic, and we're doing it together. Uh, 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 I was listening to a song on my way here this morning, Aretha Franklin, How I Got Over. And, and I tell you, one day we're going to get to sing that song reunited right here in the church house together. And I can't wait. But what, right now, we're going to do what we can, how we can, when we can. And we're going to thank God that we can. Amen. Give God some praise right now. Give God some praise right now for allowing us to be able to serve him anyhow. You know, one thing God is concerned about is what you're going after, what you focus on, and what you let go of. I, I believe that we're going to have a word this evening that's going to come from this chapter of Colossians chapter 3. Uh, God is concerned about what you get, what you go after. That's why I said seek those things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of Jesus. That's if you have been raised with Christ. What you're going after right now matters. You need to be going after something that's securing your life. You need to go after something 
that benefits you long term, not just here, but for eternity. Not only is God concerned about what you go after, God is worried about concerned about what you focus on. That's why Colossians chapter uh, three, verse two says, "Set your mind on things that are above, and not on things that are on earth." I, I guarantee you, in this pandemic. If you go after God in this pandemic, if you focus on God and Christ in this pandemic, I guarantee you, you will get over. You will get over. Another thing he says, he says in verse 5, there's some things you just got to put to death, therefore what is earthly in you. Uh, we're so tied down here that we need to make sure we focus up there. But you can't stay focused up there and you can't keep seeking him if you just, if you tied to stuff down here that's earthly and holding you back. You need to put some stuff to death this morning. And that's what we want to do. We want to help you to experience Jesus by putting some stuff to death that's keeping you from seeking and going after God and it's keeping you from focusing on God. Let's focus on God as we go into worship this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Father God. You've been good to us, Father. No matter uh, how many times we let you down, Father, you are faithful. The Bible says you are faithful. And Father, we want to just uh, ask for power, strength, and, and desire to push to be as faithful to you as you are to us. Father God, as we get ready to go into this worship, Father, we just want to focus on you. We want to seek you, Father. And we want to destroy something in us, Father, in us that's keeping us from being united with you, Father God. We love you. And you've been awesome to us. You've been mighty in this season. And you have helped us to get over. Lord Jesus, we thank you. And uh, your son, Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. <laughs> Oh Lord, oh Lord, I come well, I come to receive, to receive my I've been patiently waiting, waiting. Oh, for the harvest, for the harvest I got the Hebrew to live, 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 to
God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Use me when I'm broken. Straight where I am weak. this morning may to come and share the word of God with each and every one of you online and we just pray that this word will bless your life and we're just looking forward we're in the holiday season now we're getting close to Christmas so I would like to use some of the things about the holiday season just to remind you of the love of God and, and I pray <clears throat> that you are living your life every day reminding people that uh, that you're a child of God that we are the children of God uh, and, and that God's love still exists today in the midst of this season, just like it did before we had to come into this season. And I want to just continue to just uplift everyone and thank you for your continued faithfulness in this season also. Turn your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3. We're going to start with verse number 12 through uh, 17. The Bible says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgive each other as the Lord has forgiven you so you also must forgive verse 14 says and above all these put on love which binds everything together in perfect harmony and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word, what you say or deed, what you, you ask, do everything in the name of of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I want to preach this morning to you, wrapped up in him this season. 
wrapped up in him this season? Are you packaged to be shared as a gift of God's character? Are you packaged to be shared as a gift of God's character? I like <clears throat> these writings here by Paul as he addressed this church in Colossae. And he reminded me of what God wants to produce in me. And I, I, I thought about how uh, oftentimes in this season we're, we're, we're going online, we're ordering uh, gifts, we're ordering gifts for our loved ones and our children are even seeing the Amazon truck pull up and drop off a package and the children are wondering what's in that package. And, and we, we take these wonderful things that we value and we know our family value and we, we package it up real nice and neat. Uh, some have these fancy boxes that they, they purchase or they have and then they begin to wrap it in this nice wrap, uh, wrapping paper with these nice uh, Christmas designs. Uh, kids like the Santa Claus, the snowman, uh, the Christmas tree uh, is on it, the Rudolph's on them and, and the kids know that's mine and then adults have just the solid red or solid green or silver colors wrapped and then it's tied up together in a bow. And those big bows, we take our time to make sure that the outside of the box looks just as good as what is on the inside of the box. Uh, we, we package things. We package it for, and then on Christmas morning, on Christmas morning, uh, the, the kids see these beautiful wrapped papers with a label on it, and the label say Zaria, it says Jackson's, it says Kingston, it says Isaiah, it says Maya, it says all these names uh, on the label, it says from mom and dad, and, and, and the kids get excited, and then they rip it apart, only to get to what's on the inside that's valuable. It looked good on the outside, but they have to tear through that to get to what's on the inside. And I come to tell you this morning that you ought to be wrapped all up in him so that when people unpackage what's on the outside of you, they get to him on the inside. Oh, God, God wants so much of him to be in you. The more people get to know you, they get to what is the treasure on the inside of you. And what's on the inside of you is him. It is God Almighty. Look what, look what the word says. You ought to be packaged in his spiritual character. You should be packaged in what God looked like, what, what God is, his nature, who he is, should become you. We are the children of God, and it's important that children act like daddy. Amen. That children start to move and make decisions like daddy. You ought to be packaged in his spiritual character. Look what it says in Colossians 3 verse 12. It says, put on then. This is what it means to clothe yourself or to cover yourself. Put on then as God's chosen ones. This word chosen means that God selected you. God picked you out. And not only are you chosen, he said you are holy, which means God separated you from everybody else. He separated you for his use. Not only are you holy, he said, and you are beloved, which means you are loved by God. This is the verb, agape. That means you are loved. God is in the action of loving you. Not only have, did God pick you, God separated you for his use, made you his, and then God shared every day. He's actively showing his love toward you. He said, so since I've done all that, since I picked you up, what you can do for me is make sure you're good for everybody else. That, oh, Lord, you, you're a blessing to everybody else that come in contact with you because now that I did all this for you, you can look more like me. He says, hey, he says compassion, you need to put on. This is what you need to put on. You, are, you need to package yourself up. He said, package yourself, cover yourself with compassionate, merciful hearts, with kindness, being gentle with others. He said, humility, having the right 
a mindset that don't think too high of itself. Meekness, acting, showing your character in a way that's not too high on yourself. And he says, and patience, patience, able to endure whatever, there are others that, that may take you through some tough situations, that you are patient, you endure others, you burn with one another, which means you, you're willing, you're able, and you put yourself in his character to where you can deal with somebody. When they get on your nerves, he said, why would you do this? Because you are chosen, you've been separated from everybody else, and I'm constantly showing my love with you. Can you share my love with someone else. He says, bear one another. And if one has, he said, look at it, he got an example. He said, if somebody got a complaint, somebody got an alt with you, he said against you, what you ought to do? He said, forgive each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive. What do you mean? I got to look like Christ. And Lord, he gave the example that's probably one of the hardest, forgiving, which means in order for us to operate together, to unify, to be harmonious when we, we work together in harmony. He said, we have to learn how to produce his character. His character, he's a forgiving God. And if he share his love of forgiveness with you, you have the responsibility of sharing forgiveness with somebody else. The closer somebody get to you, they ought to be able to unpackage some forgiveness. They ought to be able to unpackage some kind, uh, compassion. He ought, they ought to be able to uh, 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 unpackage some kindness. They ought to be able to unpackage some humility. They ought to be able to unpackage some meekness and some patience. And they ought to know that because God is in you, that they can also no, you, they can't get on your nerves too easy. You're willing to bear one with another. He says, so you got to learn how to let people unpackage you. Let people take that wrapping off sometimes and get to the person that God has created in his character. You've been packaged in his spiritual character. Another thing, you've been wrapped in his love. Anybody, I love wrapping gifts. Amen. I, my wife, she's real good at it. She knows how to make sure that the ends on the side are, are bent together and that tape is laid right on the side. Uh, and my boxes may be looking uneven sometimes. But I do my best. But during Christmas time, we spend time wrapping up gifts and hiding them in secret from the kids. He says, above all these, he says, I want you to be wrapped in my love, wrapped in his love. He says, above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Love, now this is the, the noun love, which means you need to put on what it is. You need to put on love, period. Why, why do we love, why do we need this God-driven love, this love that loves you in spite of? God loved you before you even became the righteousness of him. God loved you while yet you was yet still in your sinful state. God didn't wait for you to love him like we do uh, before you love back. God loved you before you even sh uh, showed love back to him. God came to you and chose you. Uh, amen. For you to have an opportunity to be with him. God even forgive you now while you in this love. God don't hold grudges in love. God don't hold back gifts of goodness while he's in love with you. He said, you need to put this on. Why? Because in order for a community of believers to stay together, they got to be packaged in some love. They got to be wrapped, wrapped up in love, taped together in love. Uh, amen. Uh, sealed and covered all together in love because love will make sure that what's real on the inside of you, oh, it can't be, oh, y'all with me this morning, that nobody can see it. Look what it says, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. What, what is the importance? Harmony here is not just about singing. It's about getting along and doing the mission together. You are in harmony, working together in ministry instead of fighting all the time. He said you need to be <coughs> wrapped up, wrapped up and packaged in love, wrapped up 
and package in love. Why? This, this sounds good to God. Look what else he says. He says, not only should you be wrapped in his love, he said you should be decorated. Oh, Lord Jesus, I told y'all some, some kids love the Christmas trees and the snowmen and Santa Claus. When they open their gift, they love to see that on the wrap. He said you ought to be decorated in his peace. But what God like to see you decorated in is peace. He says, and let the peace of Christ rule or govern in your heart. Let it take over. Let it be your decoration. To which indeed you are called in what? One body. <clears throat> what is important about you having peace, the peace of Christ, the peace that belongs to Christ on your heart? You're a peacemaker. You want to be a peacemaker when you when people uh, come to you and you package it up in peace, they enjoy being in your prayer. You know how to bring chaos into, into oneness and, and, and bring it into peace. He says, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. Why, why, why do you need the peace of Christ to govern your, your thoughts, your feelings, your, the inner man? He said, because you've been called in one body and be thankful. Now watch this. Why, what is the body? The body is the believers, the called out believers. All us coming together and working for the Lord. Now, 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 it, it, it's, it's a reason why he says that peace, let your peace stay with you. Let, let Christ's peace be in you. And, and let me tell you, the church folks can. Don't, don't think that church folks won't get on your nerves. Amen. Church folks are family folks. You got family folks that you can't stand. They get on your nerves. But what he said is, I need you to have Christ's peace. Christ loved everybody, even the extreme version of you. He still loves you, and he still, he's, he bears you. He, 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 he's patient with you. So when people get on each other's nerves, even at church, he said you need to forgive, love, and declare peace in that situation. He says, because what? You've been called. You was invited in one body. What happened when people don't get along? Now, 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 one body throughout the Bible, even in Ephesians, is talking about one body. It's talking about the church being able to get along, Jews and Gentiles. It ain't talking about different churches with different names. It's talking about how we get along is what makes us one body. Amen. When we act like Christ, we're operating in one body because when people don't have the character of Christ, they begin to operate in different, with different agendas, not working together in the harmony of, of, of working together in social and fellowship and unity. It, it, it began to become destroyed, and before you know it, you can be in one church building, but be two or three different churches. Oh, that's, that's the, he said, you got to learn that you was invited to one body, which means that everybody in that fellowship, that local fellowship, need to learn how to love one another and declare peace with one another. How do you do that? Keep forgiveness at the front. Keep humility at the front. Keep compassion at the front. Keep kindness at the front. Keep meekness and patience and forgiveness and keep it in the front of everything you do. What are you talking about? You got to keep Christ's character for the church to function in harmony. And he said, and, and be thankful for it. Why should you be thankful? Why are you looking at somebody else get on your nerves? You get on somebody's nerves. Amen. We all get on somebody's nerves sometimes. You ought to be thankful that you are even in the body of Christ and you have the opportunity to walk with God in your inability to walk in perfection. God fix your perfection by providing the perfect gift for you so that you can start to be a gift. But he provided the perfect gift. Look what it says. Another thing, not only should you be wrapped up in his love, not only should you be decorated in his peace, you also need to be filled with his word. Uh, uh, you know, on Christmas, we like to 
unwrap the gift. We, we like to take the wrapping off. We like to take the bow off. And once you take the bow off, there's something on the inside that's more valuable than even what's on the outside. Matter of fact, what's on the inside should always be better and greater. It's what determines how beautiful it is on the outside. He says, you need to be filled with his word. Look at verse 16. He says this, let the word of Christ dwell in you, dwell living you, live in you richly. Let it be valuable. Let it be worth, may it be riches. Let the words of Christ live in you richly. It's, it's richly, it's valuable. How, what, 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 what do you need that for? Why should you be wrapped up, uh, filled uh, with the word? Why should you be filled on the inside with the word? Because then you can teach and um, admonish one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual song with thankfulness in your heart to God. So when we actually are around each other, and it's not just talking about a Sunday uh, activity. This is talking about a lifestyle. Early Christians would worship uh, in houses one with another. They had a daily call uh, to worship. If y'all ever been sitting around in your home on, on a holiday or sitting around and you just your family come together and you take a moment out and just worship with one another. Thank you, Lord, for what you do. Have you ever received a blessing and came in contact with the goodness of God, God's love, to the point where you just start singing. Every once in a while, Sister Stokes, I know when she happened, because guess what? She'll start just singing throughout the house. When she's singing, that means she's happy. And I, I know one thing. The same thing happen, happens when God is blessing you. You break out into songs, and his spirit, his word, is in you richly. When, when the word is in you richly, you can't help but share it. That's why I said teach and admonish in one another in all wisdom. You, know, you can't help to do but sing, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Why? With How you do it? With thanks, thankfulness in your heart to God. We ought to be thankful that we're able to meet that God is packaging in us, packaging us up in his character so that we can be a blessing one to another. And as we're blessing one to another, we ought to share the word one with another. We ought to sing one with another. And we ought to be thankful to God in, uh, internally with your emotions and your desire and your intellect. You ought to say, God, thank you for what you're doing for me. Thank you for changing me. Thank you for teaching me how to be a better person, packaging me up, making me look good, wrapping me and binding me in your love. And then, Lord, you put something valuable on the inside of me so that when somebody come and start peeling back on the layers of my love, the layers of my patience, the, the layers of my meekness, the layers of my humility, the layers of my kindness, they find your word in the midst of all of me. They find you pack, packaged up inside of me. You ought to be thankful in your hearts, filled with his word. You ought to be wrapped in his love, decorating his peace, and filled with his words. That, that's why 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 through 10 says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay. Talking about us. This treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not us. God has put something in us to remind us every day that the power that he put in us, it don't belong uh, to us. It belongs to him. How do we know? Because there's some things we're able to go through because of God's love. There's some things we're able to go through because of God's character. There's some things we're able to go to because of God's power that he put in us. Look what it says in verse 8. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We're struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus. Why am I, how am I getting motivated? When I think about Jesus dying for me, it make me change to be more like him. Why do I need to remember the death of Jesus? Why do I need to keep carrying this around with me? Look what it says, so that the life of Jesus may be may also be manifested in our bodies. I begin to look like him because of what he did for me. So when I go through stuff, I don't get crushed. 
When I'm driven, I don't get in despair. When I'm persecuted, I don't feel forsaken. When I'm struck down, I'm not destroyed. Why? Because his, his death is in me. I carry his death with me, and his life is manifested through me. He's making me look more like him. The last thing you need to remember, eh, even though you've been wrapped in his love, you've been decorated in his peace, you've been filled with his word, you need to remember this. You need to be labeled in his authority and power. Y'all notice, uh, you know, you ever had confusion on Christmas morning because you can't remember who the package belonged to? Y'all with me this morning? Yeah, there have been times Queen Corbin and myself, we would get to fighting because we would think, that, that's my gift. That looked like my gift because somebody forgot to put a name on it. But thank God that, oh, Lord Jesus, help me, somebody. God put his label on you. Amen. He put his label on you. That means his authority and his power. His name is on you. That's his authority and his power. You've been labeled by God as a package to be shared with the world. You are a package that's been changed so that you can help bring thankfulness and joy to the world. Look what it says, and whatsoever you do. Yeah, that means anything that you do, and whether it's by your word or by your action. He said, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do it by his authority and his power. Aren't you glad God gave you the authority and he got you moving in his power? Oh, y'all got to hear me this morning. God's authority, how he regulates. But the main thing is, God has chosen you. Then it said he made you holy, so he has authorized you so that you can go out and be a blessing for everybody else. He, he, he chose you, made you holy, and he put his love all over you. So whatever you do in word or deed, do everything how? By the power and authority of the Lord Jesus. How do you do that? Giving thanks to God the Father through him. Giving thanks to God the Father through him, by him, by channeled by him. You got to do it through him in order to be a blessing in his authority and power. You've been labeled. You've been labeled. You've been labeled by God to be the package that the world need to declare love, peace, and praise through his word, you've been declared to be that. The question is, will you stay wrapped in these things? Will you stay bound, bound in these things? Will you stay packaged in his character? You know, uh, my baby girl, I, 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 she just loves seeing these gifts come by Amazon. But I remember, I, I've been thinking about watching her get ready for Christmas and I think about my mom taking us down by the, the Mall of Memphis where Toys R Us was. Y'all remember that Toys R Us that used to be over there uh, by the Mall of Memphis? She'll take me in there, let me pick myself out a few gifts, amen. Uh, and, she, and then she'll surprise me with something, but she let me go see uh, what I want, amen. And, and what happened is my mama take that gift, uh, bring it home, and, 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 and that'll be the last time I, I get to see it is once it get out the car. And, and next thing I know, uh, she done went somewhere and, 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 and decorated it real nice and, and, and fixed it up and put a bow on it. And, and, and next thing I know, uh, it's somewhere under the tree. But I would go up under the tree and I look, and it'd be a whole lot of different gifts there. But there'd be a few that said Jimmy Jr. Hey, man, they say Jimmy Jr. And, and I can look, and Laquita had some gifts up under there. Then Corbett would have some. Daddy would have some. Then Mama would have some gifts because they all was labeled. Uh, I, I don't know about Charlie, but you know what? Uh, the, the thing about Jesus that make him different is uh, I, I, I didn't have to go <laughs> to find him, but he found he found me. And, and when he found me, he, he, he chose uh, uh, me somebody. Look at this. He, he picked out something. He, 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 God deserved something better than me. But God wanted me. He chose me. He separated me, made me holy. Anybody been made more valuable? And not only did he make me valuable, he, he split his love. He decorated me with all his love. He started changing me. Amen. He started changing me. He changed me by putting his word in me. And then the outside 
of me began to develop and began to change. He wrapped me up in grace. He he wrapped me up with love. He 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 bound me in mercy. He 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 covered me with the cross. He decorated me with his cross. And then he st stopped and put a label on me and said, "This belong to Jesus." I don't know about you, but I get excited that God picked me out. That God chose me. That God put in His love all in me. And every once in a while, I start to act, see, see a difference in me because God thought me worthy enough to make me a gift to share with the world. Is there anybody out there that's happy that God made you a gift to share with the world? He made you love a little better. He made you forgive a little more. He made you a little bit merciful. He made you develop a little grace. He made you develop some joy. He made you thankful when you used to be ungrateful. What God did was cover you in his character. Give God some praise for covering you in his character. You don't look like what you used to be. You don't talk like what you used to talk like. You, yeah, you, people might not think you changed that much, but you're still not what you used to be. God's still working on you. That's the thing about sanctification. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Every day God is making me more like him. Is there anybody that can testify that I'm not what I used to be, and God is still making me better in my today than I was yesterday. That's what it means to be filled with his word. Let it dwell in you richly. Go out there and sing, shout, and show everybody. I'm thankful for what God did for me on that cross. I'm carrying that cross inside of me. That word is inside of me so that I can be a blessing to everybody else. Give God some praise. Give God a hand clap of praise. Give him that hand clap of praise right now. Make sure this Christmas, this holiday season, you're not so caught up in the physical gifts that you forget about the gift. And, 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 and the purpose of him being your gift is so that you uh, be a gift to someone else. Amen. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give him the glory. I'm so thankful to be in Christ, and I'm thankful to be in the body of Christ because we have the responsibility of telling the world and declaring peace, telling the world about his word and declaring peace within it. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. You heard the word. You heard the word this morning. The Lord wrapped his son up on a cross. Uh, suffering and pain and the shedding of blood was, the, was God's gift to you. He didn't have to do it. God put his son on the cross who is God. And, and, and he died a, a death of, 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 of pain and suffering. It was the worst form of death on earth. It was the death penalty of that day to hang on on a cross. Jesus did that for you and for me. And so what God asks us to do in return is to have faith in his son Jesus that, and you declare that Jesus Christ is the son of God. You declare that. Make that your faith. You begin to walk with him, talk with him, and continue to live a life until uh, the, your, your last breath in Jesus. That's faith. And then you repent. Lord, I'm sorry that I haven't been walking with you. I haven't, haven't united with you, Father God. I, I've been running from you. I haven't become what you, needed, you wanted me to become. You, you've been the answer the whole time of changing me. Jesus will change you and make you a better person. He'll change your family life. He'll change your work life. He'll change how you see life. And when you see life in the eyes of God, it, it makes every day a day of Thanksgiving. Repent. And then be baptized. Somebody need to be baptized. You haven't been baptized. You haven't put on Christ. And that's how you begin the process of receiving his Holy Spirit and putting on, uh, putting on his character. Uh, Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sin. And guess what you did? Then you receive the Holy Spirit. The character of God is put in you because you're steady learning and living and walking and talking to God to the point where as being a child of God, you have no choice but to start looking like your daddy. Amen, amen. So if you, if you want to give your life to God or you need to repent, put it in a thread right now. Put it in a thread. Put it in a thread. If you need prayer, put it in a thread right now. Make sure y'all share this video. Somebody needs this today. Somebody needs this 
today. You Make sure you share it. But if you need prayer, put it in there. We're praying at 12 o'clock noon. If you need our prayer call information, put just prayer. Put prayer, all caps, in, in, the, in the thread. And we, one of us will share with you our prayer call information. Amen. We'll give it to you. Amen. And, and we'll bless you with it. Now, we don't put it out in public because there's a lot of evil stuff going on right now uh, with online ministry. So what we do, we message it to those that we, we know and we're trying to get to know. And we'll call you. If you want to be baptized, we'll, we'll baptize you. Amen. If you live in the city of Memphis, North Mississippi, West Memphis, East Memphis, wherever you live and within this, we will meet you and baptize you. We'll baptize you. If you live outside these boundaries of the city, we'll find somebody. We'll find a man of God there. It don't matter who do it, as long as they're a child of God. Amen. That's the great thing about the kingdom of God. We're working all over the world. Amen. We're working all over the world. We can reach you anywhere. There's a child of God somewhere that will put you in the watery graves of baptism, and then you come up a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. Give God some praise. Somebody hear this call right now. I, can th I know somebody right now. Hear this call. Just reach out to us, and we'll be happy to get with you. Now we have a song by uh, Praise Team. Show me the way.
pray you enjoyed this wonderful word that we had this morning, wrapped up in him this season, wrapped up in him this season. You know, you need to be wrapped all up in Christ, uh, as, as, just as we do with uh, Christmas gifts, and we package them up so beautifully, uh, and there's something so valuable inside that we're willing to share with someone. We ought to do that also with ourselves. God has created us. We are, we are vessels. Uh, that are treasures that God is sharing with the world. And we ought to be ready just to package his character in us. His spiritual character ought to be wrapped in us. We ought to be wrapped in his love. We ought to be decorated in his peace. We ought to be filled with his word. And then we ought to be able to make sure that we're labeled in his authority and his power. Give God some praise this morning. Amen. Give God some praise that you are labeled in his authority and, and his power. Uh, this morning, we want to stop and take time out just to remember the Lord. That's what we do at this time. We stop and just uh, remember the Lord and what he done for us when he died on that cruel tree of the cross. The Bible teaches us that we ought to just commune. We ought to commune on the first day of the week. On the first day of the week, when the disciples came to bre together to break bread, Paul preached until midnight. And we re read that in Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. And on this morning, you ought to be ready to break bread with the Lord. You ought to be ready to sit at the Lord's table and gather around him and just hear him. That's what we do when we worship. We come to his fellowship in the Lord's presence. And when we're around the table, we're here to remember the sacrifice that he made with his son, Jesus. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. If it wasn't for Jesus, Father God, we would not have hope. We would not uh, be saved. We would not be the redeemed, Father. We, we would not be the children of God. Our sins are still separate us from you. But Father God, you put your son on the cross. He became the payment for our sins. And we just want to stop and say thank you. We thank you, Father, for his body that was broken for us, Father, his body that was bruised for us, Father, for our iniquities, Father. We thank you, Father, for his blood that was shed and that, that represent his life being given so that we can walk in a new covenant, new relationship with you, Father God. We're so thankful, Father, because you saved us before we could even recognize we recognize we need needed saving, Father God. So we thank you and we appreciate you for this joy of being able to sit at your table and commune one with another. Father, thank you for this beautiful family from all walks of life, all people. And most important, God, we all had the same problem. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name you pray, we pray. Let us say amen. We come down to another part of our service, which is the collection. And we should have some joy right now. Amen. You should have some joy. You should get excited. You know, every time, uh, which haven't happened in a while, my Cowboys win, you know, I really get excited. Now, I know the next time we win, and Lord, if it's a good game, I'm going to be real excited. But you know what? God did something bigger than, 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 than a Cowboy win. God did something bigger than a Laker win. God did something bigger than uh, a graduation or another degree. What God did, he fixed it all for us. He fixed everything. The, 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 the death that Jesus, the life that Jesus gave for us and his death that he experienced, it means everything for us to enter into eternity. It's the greatest victory you can have in your life. And you ought to thank God for that. You ought to be joyful and excited to give back to God, especially after all he has given to you. And 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, we learned that on the first day of the week, we still have the same pattern, the same pattern of giving and giving to the ministry and blessing others, especially those in need, to take care of the temple according to the standards of the Old Testament, the workers of the temple. In other words, the only way the church can move forward if you're willing to give, not just time, not just, not just money, time and effort, all things, your, your life to ministry. That's how the church moved. But right now, we're asking for, amen, some cash, amen. You know, if you have, uh, if you have a cash app, you can give to Northeast Side Church of Christ on cash app. It's the money sign, N-E-S-C-O-C. -E you can also give on Giveify. Look for the Northeast Side Church of Christ here in Bartlett, Tennessee, in Bartlett, Tennessee. And, and, and we just thank you for what you're doing. If you, if you can't give uh, by 
anything by any means such as Cash App or Givify. You can also contact us at uh, NorthEastSideCoc at gmail.com, and we can find a way to reach out to you and also get you to receive your giving. We'll find a way to work and get to you. But well, you can give. You can give to give at this time. Go ahead and start the process as we pray. Father God, we thank you for this offering, Father God. You, you've been so good to us, Father. Sometimes we don't stop and just acknowledge. Every breath we take, every, every move we make, Father God, is given is given by you, Father God. You've been blessing us, Father, the prosperity we have, the thanksgiving dinners we enjoyed, Father, the fact that we still have food, we're still able to work, Father. And, Father God, even when we didn't have some of these things, Father God, you showed that you are a way maker. You're a way maker, Father God, and we thank you. We thank you for giving to us, Father. But, Father, we're praying right now that with the seeds that are about to be sown by your people, Father God, that it may bless the kingdom of God, that ministry may move by it, Father, that uh, the voice of your son may be heard by it, that, your, that the evangelism, Father, may be heard from your people as they go into the world, different places at the same time. Father, we praying that your people may tell somebody about Jesus, Father God, that we may declare your word and make sure that all the world know that your son Jesus, he loved them. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen. gather this holiday season make sure that you stay wrapped up in him you need to be wrapped up in his love you need to be wrapped up in his uh, uh, peace you need to be wrapped up and and filled with his word in this season and I hope this bless you I hope that word bless you today that as you gather your gifts and as you buy invaluable things 
for your children and for each other and for your family members. Make sure that you become the biggest gift given this season by being wrapped all up in the character of God. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise right now. Give God some praise. Make sure you stay tuned in to our online ministry. Make sure you join us on Bible class this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Be sure, staff, remember this Tuesday we will be having our staff meeting as we continue to plan uh, for 2021 and also the rest of the remainder of the year and the things we can do to continue to keep a community together in the midst of this pandemic. We, we want to thank all those who've been working hard, all the media team, uh, Sister uh, <clears throat> Diane, uh, all of our uh, prayer warriors and our deacons who keep the prayer call going, who make sure we have everything we need to do what we need to do in this season. We're thankful for all those who do individual calls to members just to check on members every week. We thank you. Don't, don't ever think that we're not remembering the things. But most of all, make sure you understand, God remember all those who are serving in the kingdom. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for this ability to worship you, Father God, and give you all the glory and the honor. Father God, we just praying, Father, that as this message uh, go across the line, Father, uh, we just praying, uh, Father, that someone was touched, Father, somebody recognized that they are a gift, and Father, you pour so much into us so that we can look like you. We can be wrapped in you, Father. We can be glued to you in this season, Father God. And we just pray, and Father, we don't forget how powerful it is, the treasure you have made us, the, the things you put into us through your word. Father, we just pray that we don't soon forget that even in a season like this, we can still be a blessing to others. Father, we can still save souls in this season, Father God. Father, we pray for this week. Father, we pray as we continue. We pray for our country. We pray for all the emergency workers. We pray for our hospitals, Father God. Uh, Father God, that are overwhelmed in, in this season, Father God. Praying for all the nurses that are children of God, all the doctors that are children of God, anybody that work in a hospital, Father God. We're praying for all these central workers in the grocery store, banks, police officers, Father, firemen, mailmen, Father, anybody, Father, who still have to keep going and keep the world turning in this season. But most of all, for God, Father God, just praying for the people of earth, all the people across this country, Father, as we are all dealing with the same issue at the same time. Father, we're praying, Father, for the doctors and the scientists that are working on these things, Father, trying to find the vaccine, Father, for, for the people, Father. And we're praying, Father, over the things to come, Father, that these decisions are guided by you. We're praying for the president and the incoming president, Father God, that uh, the coming president may lead, uh, Father God, in a way uh, that please not only that please you, and they keep the people united, Father God. We're just praying, Father, for the many, uh, the various situations going on in our country. Father God, we love you. We thank you, Father. Keep us in perfect peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen.